Arlick. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Elgonac Community Schools Board of Education on Monday, September 23rd. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance and a moment of silence. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. William Brady? Here. Bill Clark? Here. <laughs> John Street? Here. J.S. Pasco? Nicole Emery? Here. Jennifer Baker? Here. Andy Flick? Here. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you. Up first, we have our consent agenda items. Would anyone like to make a motion? Make okay. a motion the board approve the consent agenda as presented, including the minutes and all that stuff. <laughs> Items A through C. Support. Which is supported. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Right, that passes. Bringing us to information items 5A, Mr. Melrose. Yes, uh, just right now in the high school. Right. We're, we're kind of. Pause oh, for one second. Go ahead. Um, just uh, we're, right now we're in the middle of uh, fall NWA testing, so we're kind of in that process. And along with everything right now, got all, the, all the fall sports are in swing. Uh, one of the things I just want to report to the board, one of the big focuses for our PD and everything for this year is our, uh, that we bought a subscription for all the teachers in this building uh, for Magic School Plus. It's an AI program for teachers. And uh, we had our first PD last week, and the amount of, it's probably the best thing we bought for the teachers in terms of what they're using. They, it creates so many different things that they can use. It creates rubrics. You can upload a reading, say, in social studies, and it'll create questions for that reading uh, for the teachers. Uh, it makes things so much easier. Special ed teachers are using them to help to develop IEPs. Uh, there's just so much there that we're just scratching the surfaces, but, we're, but every meeting, our PD, we're, we're, we're having teachers share out what they're doing, and it just really is a, a really cool tool. I'm, I'm hoping uh, maybe in a couple months having teachers come in and present to the board just to kind of show what that looks like and what they're doing with it. But it's, it, it is pretty neat. And then just coming up uh, October 9th and 10th, we have conferences coming up here. Uh, October 18th is the homecoming game, the 19th is the dance. Uh, October 30th, we have the NJHS and NHS induction that day. October 31st, the uh, Halloween, we have the daycare trick-or-treaters coming over at, at 9.30 in the morning. And then just November 1st, we'll have our the academic awards for the second semester last year. That's pretty much it. Thank you. Mrs. Estage. Hi. So we started off the year pretty strong. We did a few new things with PBIS. We had our specials teachers um, teach during, during their classes. They rotated through the station. So it's pretty, um, we took more time, basically, than we, than we normally do. And things are pretty well set. Most routines and procedures are in place. And uh, tomorrow we will be putting our finishing touches on our win groups. They'll, so they'll be starting uh, toward the end of this week, which is a lot quicker than we've ever been able to get stuff in place. We've kind of changed up some screeners that gives us better information and it doesn't take as much time to get the kids going. Um, Renee Wilson is going to head up the Glow Dash fundraiser again this year uh, for the PTO. It's kind of like a pledge-based uh, fundraiser, and they, the can, kids can earn rewards based on how much they raise, like principal for a day, and then there's different paraphernalia that they can get to be more glowy during the Glow Dash. But over the years, we do this about every other year, and we raise over $20,000 for PTO, which helps you know pay for all field trips and assemblies and pretty much anything the teachers ask for. PTO is able to help them because of this fundraiser. So that will be kicking off at the end of this week, and we'll go through parent-teacher conferences. Uh, we're also excited about our fifth and sixth grade beginning band. They've been just kind of getting acquainted with music and learning about different instruments and that. And tomorrow night they will be fitted in the cafeteria for their instruments and hopefully they'll be playing here pretty quick. And also in October, we're looking forward to conferences in our book fair and fifth grade camp next month. Thank you. Ms. 
Kelly? Things are off to a great start at Millside, so we had a wonderful turnout for Open House. Our families really appreciated the backdrops that were provided by PTO, so thanks to PTO for that, it was a big hit. Um, we were able to lend them to our early childhood GSRP program too, and it was second use, great hit there as well. Um, I think we're just about finished with our NWEA testing, maybe a couple stragglers here and there that we're finishing up. We had our first PLC on Friday, which is our professional learning community, so we're going to have once a month for teams to meet in grade levels and just start looking a little bit deeper at some data and driving our decisions to best meet our kids' needs that way. So um, coming up, we'll be doing the Glow Dash fundraiser as well. We're also looking forward to parent-teacher conferences coming up, and our book fair will be during that time as well. Okay. Our school year is also off to a great start. It's been busy, but everything is starting to smooth out. Every, all the kids are learning their routines and everything. Um, we had our licensing renewal today, and thankfully everything went well with that. And we are preparing for the month of October with Picture Day and all the different school events and activities. Mrs. Sanders? Okay, so on the curriculum front, it's been busy. All the resources have been checked in and made sure to um, get to the places they need to go so the teachers have them in their hands, as well as all online accounts have been created for staff and students at this time. So should all be up and, and going. Uh, right now, I've been meeting with Theresa and Kristen Day trying to uh, get all the information we need to do a, a district's needs assessment and where we are with our data and where we need to go forward. So. Um, getting ready to get that all together and done. Um, at the elementary, Amplify, we've done quite a bit of PD on that already. The teachers are meeting. We are going through some growing pains as with any new curriculum um, you do. I get to go Wednesday. I've been invited by a fifth grade class, um, Mrs. Hoopers, to come check out the Boost Reading portion, which is kind of an intervention <coughs> program um, that's online that came with the program to see how that works. So. She called me up and said that she was real excited that it had a lot to offer, so I'm gonna go check that out on Wednesday and as um, this week coming up and looking forward to getting to meet with the teachers to see where they are and what they need moving forward at this point. Thank you. Can, can you expand on the district needs assessment a little bit more? Like what, what so we do at? it every year, but this year I really wanted to dig deep. So I, we started talking with um, the RESA because they have the Michigan Data Hub now where all this information goes. And so, so that way we're using it to the best of its ability. Like there's so much in it and how you pull from it and what information will it give us. So we're excited to see what those reports are and to make sure that we're utilizing all of that stuff as best we can and be able to bring that to you. So it's gonna pull um, information from not only this past year, but it'll go back a little bit. So that way we can see where we're growing or where we're not. So we can dig a little deeper to get more information and find out why and, and make the advances where we need to. Excellent, thank yeah. you. All right, any board reports? All right, hearing none, Mr. Latos. Yep. Um, just kind of to piggyback off that, you know, one of the things when uh, Melissa with her expandable curriculum, we've talked about strengthening the MyKit process and the school improvement plan process and the needs assessment will kind of go along with that. So again, <coughs> hoping to tap some of those data sources, but not only get the numbers, but figure out how, how that drives instruction and improvement. So excited about that. Um, as you know, uh, I was uh, at the superintendent, state superintendent's conference last week. I thank you all for sending me to that. That was an uh, excellent learning experience. Um, a lot on AI. That well, th There were some different paths that you could go to, and um, I kind of chose AI because it's some of the things that we've been talking about. And, you know, the unique thing about being at the superintendent's level, Ryan's talking to you about the excitement and, and, and some of the things that it you know, makes available to teachers. But then there's the policy side that we probably have to look at. And, um, you know, it, it'll be some decision making on the board's part, decision making at the district level. Um, just talking a little bit about how far we want that to go, open AI versus closed AI, um, student use, all those types of things that come along with this. It is a fantastic tool and there's a whole bunch of benefits, but we just gotta make sure that we're rolling it out and it's it's working for good instead of uh, working against us so 
yeah, we're pretty excited about that. But anyway, the conference was great outside of that. Um, we had a chance to uh, you know, talk a little bit of legislation too, and um, so I'll share that with you with the budgets. A little bit of good news came at least this past week, so we'll see where we're at with that. Um, <clears throat> Talk with the uh, group that's doing our bleachers out there at the football field. They are slated to start at the, as soon as we are done with the year for football, they are slated to start tearing down and getting ready and prepped for, um, you know, at, at, at very least getting that structure up, getting the base built and, uh, you know, weather permitting, finishing the whole project prior to the winter, but they're, they're also in a spot too where they've talked before if um, you know if it were to roll into the spring, they figured that they could be done in March or you know before spring sports start. But I'm hoping to uh, you know the way the weather has been, we should be able to uh, hopefully get a lot of that taken care of prior to the winter coming. Uh, one of the things I've been talking to you about, and, and, and I, I promise you, it hasn't been for lack of trying. Uh, out in the school, you know, we've we've done some nice things. We've you know gave a little bit of facelift, painting the walls, redoing the lockers, things like that. And one of the things I talked about is the importance of branding out our hallways. And, and when I meet Brandon, I'm you know, trying to bring some of that sense of pride with, you know, when kids walk down the hallway and they see, you know, the muskrat nation and, and all these types of things that, you know, it's something they could look at and say, yeah, this doesn't look like, you know, I've heard people say with the white walls, it kind of looks like a prison. In it's the last thing you want kids thinking when they walk the halls. You want them to have some place where they can go and feel good about where they're at. So um, starting very soon, and I say this because we've now signed a contract to get it done, so I know it's going to get done, um, we will be starting in the four hallways that run this way down uh, down the hall that will be branded out. You'll see I, I shared a little bit with Andy today. He had stopped by, but um, just going to say all the, you know, we'll have some educational quotes out there too motivational type stuff, but really, when you walk down the hallway, you'll know you're at Algonac High School, and you'll know that Algonac's muskrat uh, is our logo, so I, I think it's kind of exciting. I think the kids will enjoy it as well, so pretty excited about that coming. Uh, and then lastly, um, mentioned the budget. So last week, Senate Bill 911 um, was passed in the Senate, and that was the MIPSERS retirement bill. Um, Remember back in the back in the summer we talked about there was long story short districts and their employees have been funding the shortfall in the retirement fund uh, since 2012 and the promise was always that once that fund was fully funded that that would fall off meaning that money would come back to the schools well it's fully funded but yet the whole seven percent foundation that they had talked about coming back um, was on the table and it was at first brought upon as okay it's a one-time money that we'll give it to you well this Senate Bill 911 has made it a permanent thing it's not the full 7% it's like 5.4 5.5% but it's still a pretty nice significant bump in foundation allowance that will be ongoing year to year as opposed to just a one-time payment um, also kind of backfills the $250 that they had promised per student, or that we had thought we were getting per student that we didn't get. So um, pretty excited about that. It's not the full 7% that we hoped, but um, talks are ongoing. That will go to the House. The House is meeting one day next, or this week, which is actually the 26th, and they're expected to take action on it. If you remember too, back in the summer, the House was okay with that. It was in the Senate where it stalled out. So now it's going backwards, then it's okay with it, but we assume it'll pass in the house and then um, we can really lock down our budget for the following school year. And this is a permanent? This thing. will be permanent, yeah, yeah be permanent. it will be ongoing, yep. So here, the AI, the AI part, <laughs> is that, um, uh, is there like a positive feeling that came out of this about we can use it for good rather than, yeah. uh, that we can get it steered towards good rather than not good for yeah. us? I, I, I think so, Andy, and I think, um, you know, it's like anything else. And, and I know, again, like I said, as an as a English teacher, and, and, you know, sometimes your head goes right to that, well, kids are going to plagiarize everything, because sometimes that's, that's one of the things that could potentially happen with that. 
However, um, when you look at it, I think if the students are taught the proper ways to use it and, and talking about um, where, where that line still is, because there's still a line with plagiarism, right? But um, taking that information, using it more as a source as opposed to just using the entire document, um, you know, that part of it. And, and then beyond that, like I said, the possibilities truly are endless. And um, yeah. we had, like I said, the first day of school, um, I think it just really opened up eyes for a lot of teachers. And, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a document. If I, I know if I was teaching, and you know the fact that you can have a presentation that's pretty much ready made for you in the matter of a minute, you know, just based on a prompt that you give, and um, you know, at that point, all my job as a teacher would be is to fact check, you know, make sure that what's on there is accurate and you know, generally is right. So, um, no, I, I just see it being real positive for our instructors, and you know, Ryan had talked to you a little bit about you know special education goals. Um, you know, a lot of times with our special education students, individualizing instruction, for example, um, one of the things that they talked about even up there again this, uh, this past week was if I have a student, let's say um, a special ed student that has a reading disability, and maybe they read at a second grade level, okay, but they're in a fourth grade classroom. That, it, that assignment can be individualized just with a click of a button to be same content, right. but read on a second grade level. And so I, I, I think that it's, um, you know, like I said, there, there's so much that can be done with it. And I, I really do believe that. And, and the feeling up there is very positive about it too. Not to mention the fact that uh, some statistics they were showing, kind of mind blowing of kids that have graduated from college in the last two to three years and the percentage of, of them that use AI in their profession is incredible. So we're not we're not doing a service to kids by hiding them from it, I guess. So. And about your about the branding, yeah. um, I, when you and I were talking today, um, Armada, I was there for, I can't remember what the event was, but um, Armada High School, and they had banners hanging from the ceiling and stuff on the walls, whatever that, not, it, it was, you knew, like you said, you were knew you were at Armada School. There was, you know, go Tigers and this and so on and so forth in the whole place, and um, and it made it look not so institutional, you know, more educational in a good environment. So I love that we're doing that here. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Do you have any pictures of what the bleachers will look like? Yeah. Okay, so you do. Yeah, I could get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a few things that they're uh, fine tuning on the press box still. Um, but, but I think a lot of that's gonna come when they're out here on site. I mean, it's, they're all pretty standard, Jim, but yeah, I, I could definitely share that with you. Yeah. They said the press box is gonna go up in one full unit, just lift it up and yeah. Yeah, they're pre, which I didn't know, yeah, they're kind of pre-built yeah. before, and they just come on a big, and I don't know if they come in sections, Bill, or if it's already all one thing, but yeah, it's, they're already pre-designed, and. Just a matter of getting your color scheme and that type of stuff. The old one's going to go in John's backyard. With John's guy, I think, well, not, he, he was asking for royal blue for our. Uh, yeah, 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 well, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah we're, we're going to make sure, we're make sure we can help. No, I, we're, we're pretty excited about it, and yeah. they're overdue, and we've got um, So it, it's a project that, you know, just safety alone, right, and, and types of things. Our bleachers are getting pretty old. They're, they're over 30 years old. It's time to time to move on and replace them. So right now. And then the track, is that part of it too? Track is all done except for the lines. <laughs> okay. And actually we um we had a phone call in today because they completed the track, but they have to have a surveyor that comes out to make sure that the distance is and everything's precise. So um, we're waiting on the surveyor to come out and then the painter will be out right after that and cool. that project will be done as well. For, for the stairs on the bleachers, had they come up with any ideas or, or out to prevent a wheelchair from driving? Off yeah, it, and we so we had talked a little bit about that because I brought it up yeah. so because it's um, so they will come up the way that the ramp's going to come up is kind of up this way and over this way. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly where that stair will come up if it's going to be kind of outside of that where they're coming up the front. I know we have two stairs in the front 
said, like if you were facing directly at the bleachers, yeah. that will go straight up. Front center. Though. On the edge, though, it's like, it's kind of based on how that ramp gets up there, and I don't know that it'll be um, blocked off to where the stairs are if the stairs are coming up the front. Yeah. We yeah. brought that concern up and they asked them about it, too, yeah. so it is yeah. something. Next, we have visitors and their requests. We have one, we have Miss Eileen Tesh. Welcome. Thank you. For coming to speak with us. Uh, as a reminder, we ask that you hold your comments for five minutes. Oh, comments you share. Okay. Uh, yes, my name is Eileen Tesh, and uh, I have decided to, to run for school board. As you know, I've been coming now for the past year on and off, and uh, Unfortunately, um, you know, we talk about all the things you're doing, the, the bleachers, the, the uh, branding, and uh, the money, but according to the U.S. News and World Report, here in Algonac schools, the rating is 31% for elementary students that are that tested at or above for proficiency, uh, for the proficiency level for reading and math. So I don't know how long it's been at that level, and you're shaking your head. I, that's oh. not the numbers that we have. Well, I did, I looked, researched it over and over. So I would appreciate if you would give me the correct numbers. They're not listed as I saw on the website, but uh, on your website. So I went to the state and federal um, information. The bottom line is, um, from what I understand, the total revenue yearly, annually, is to about 20 million. So that's 10 to 12,000 per student. And we just need, things are changing, AI, and you want to expand. And obviously we want, one thing that the research said is that the uh, students are not ready, are not college ready. So I don't know what all that means. All I know is I, we can do better. And the teachers are doing a great job. So uh, it must, it starts at the top. And I, what I would like to see are subjects um, like teaching about cooking and insurance and home repair and self-defense and survival skills. Because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. The world is in turmoil. Social etiquette, social etiquette. I talked to you about the Ten Commandments. You said you're gonna get back to me when you had this policy meeting. It's been over a year, so. Maybe you could include that in your letter. Um, but things like public speaking, personal finance, skills that they need, because many students are not gonna go on to college. Entrepreneurship. So I would just like, that's why I wanna see a change. And, um, this is our community. We all need to be here working together to see that these children get the best opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have two action items this evening. First item, 7A, board policy updates. Uh, it has been shared with all of us. We've seen the, the new policy updates that have come forward. Um, would anyone like to make a motion? A motion that the Board of Education approve the through policy, July 2024 annual policy updates as presented. Support. Who supported any questions, comments? Just got it. Just Again, and Jen had asked about the length of that update, and it, and it won't be that lengthy going forward. Um, they do two updates a year, much like Neola did, but uh, this one, there was a lot of verbiage in there. We had Title IX stuff that's all been changed at the federal level that we had to deal with. Um, the prohibitive subjects of bargaining that came back through are all, they've gone to the regular policy at this point. They weren't just an update, so they're in the manual now. So. A lot of policies that were in there that uh, normally wouldn't be in an update, so uh, is a little bit longer this time. But, yeah. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. And then we have last is an overnight trip request for fifth grade camp. Would anyone like to make a motion on that one? A motion that the Board of Education approve the overnight trip request for the fifth grade class to attend camp at the Howell Nature Center on October 23rd through the 25th, 2024. The cost of the trip will be paid by parents and fundraisers. There will be no cost to the district. Support. Any questions? Comments? 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Right, that passes. Motion to adjourn. Support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Wow. All right. Have a good evening.